any heart shattered anyone sinking down hold on hold on for all of the sinner for the weary and weather thrown and tossed hope is lost hold on hold on so there is a name the rage of the storm when the walls are closing in and the darkness all along just praying for the daylight peace for the soul there's grace for the morning when you feel like letting go there God, the wind of the world seems so strong sometimes. Wind of our worry and fears. But what a blessing it is to have the King of Kings as an anchor.
in the most outrageous storm that we could possibly go through in our life, there you are to give us a firm foundation, to give us a steadiness, to give us a truth to rest upon and to sink our teeth in. Jesus, that is you. Lord, I know I could go around this room right now and people could stand up and testify of how you have been their anchor. Even today. Lord, if we would have, you would have pulled back the veil, you, we would see that you're holding us all down right now. So, Lord, I thank you for that song. I thank you for the truth in that song. I thank you for a man that sings that song from his heart. And he can sing from a place because he's seen you be his anchor over and over and over again. So, Lord, we love you. We thank you that we can come tonight and sit in your house and proclaim that you are our anchor. So, Lord, I pray you speak to us tonight as we get into this word, get into your word. I pray you steady. You steady some folks tonight, Lord. You give some folks some assurance tonight. And we pray this in the, in the name of Jesus, which is the name above all. And everybody says amen up in here. Man, wasn't that beautiful? Y'all give the Lord a hand about that. I've been saying it before. You can sing a song or you can sing one. And our group usually sang it. Yeah. Go look that song up. That's a Crowder song. Brand new song. It's a blessing too. John chapter 3. Let's go to the book of John. That's what we're studying right now on Wednesday nights. John chapter 3. Eight weeks into it. We've made it to the third chapter. We're going pretty good, ain't we? Did you come in ready? Well, he's ready for you. How about you, Raven? You ready? Yeah. <laughs> hey. They're just slipping in here off a of vacation. You, you, we can smell the vacation on them. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Man, I'm so glad y'all are here. Let's, let's just jump in. Uh, John chapter 3. Let me, just, let me just tell you where we're at. So last week we saw Jesus. We, we saw, you know, we, he's just starting in his ministry. But now we see, we see his passion and his zeal for what, for what he has for the church. Or we could say at this point in time in the, in, the, in the scripture for the father's house because he comes into town and he rolls up on the temple grounds and here we have people making money at the church, selling you know, sacrifices, exchanging money all for 12.5% interest. It's just they've made it something that God did not design it as. So Jesus comes in, we read it, he made a whip of cords, he whipped those people, he cleaned the house because he has zeal. I love that word, he has zeal. I, I studied that word a little bit more this week as I looked into it. I kind of shared it uh, Sunday at, uh, at our, in our Sunday school class. But if you're taking notes, you, you, you didn't know this, but zeal means rivalry. Like anything that, that, that is against God's original design is a rival for God. Anything that's in our life that's against him, it, he, he's against that. It's, it's a rival for him. So zeal means rivalry. He has a passion for it. He has a passion for the Father's house. And then we went on to study, now that Jesus come and died for us, where's the Father's house at now? It's his children. So just the passion that he had for the Father's house there in Jerusalem, he has it for each and every one of us. Imagine the zeal that he has for you today. So during this Passover time, here's what we see. We read it in Scripture. Jesus begins to heal people. I mean, can you imagine he walks up to demon-possessed 
person and calls demons out. We saw that Sunday. He walks up to a person that hadn't been seeing their whole life and they begin to see the deaf hear those that haven't walked in years, he says, rise up, get up. He's just touching people. He's making people whole. I mean, no one's ever seen anything like this. And this is what Jesus is doing during this time of Passover. So this, obviously, I mean, this got everyone's attention, especially this one preacher. This one preacher or this one leader of the day. And that's who we're going to look at today here in John chapter 3. So let's just start in verse 1 because this man Nicodemus he is all in on who Jesus is for a minute right here. Verse three, uh, chapter 3 verse 1 says there was a man of the Pharisees his name was Nicodemus. He was a ruler of the Jews and this man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, we know that you are a teacher. Come from God. Notice it is the capital G, the, the Almighty God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God, big G, is with him. Okay. You, you got to understand who Nicodemus is here for just a minute. It says that he was a Pharisee which was he would be an elite uh, Jewish preacher, a religious figure. Uh, when you really study him, he's really the leader of leaders. He's kind of the preacher of the preacher. He's kind of over everybody pretty much in that religious atmosphere. But if you wanted to know spiritual things, this was the guy that you went to. If there was something in town going on that needed you know, spiritual attention, he would be the one there. And everybody would probably be putting him up on a pedestal. So this guy is not just somebody. He's pretty much the man, and he's a Pharisee. Now, when you go look up Pharisees and what it, what it, what it takes to be a Pharisee, I mean, you've got to, to be devoted all of your life. So this man is all in from, from what he thinks is the right way. When you look at the Hebrew word for Pharisee, it means to be a separate one. You know, these are the guys that separate themselves from anything that goes on to the world, and they just devoted their, their time to, uh, in their day, the scrolls of the Lord. So he would be zealous for God. He would know mo the Mosaic law backwards and forwards. But here's the sad thing about it. He would be the part of the group of the guys that would go in and start making man-made rules too. All this weird stuff where, you know, nobody, nobody could, could, could keep this stuff, you know. So this, this is that guy. He's, he's that guy. But, but again, if his... If, if he, his, 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 his Picture would be on the front of the weedy box as the religious man of the year. Okay? So this is who this guy is. But here's the problem with, with Nicodemus and the Pharisees and those like him. Listen, he had no heart. Okay? It, it was all rules and regulations and religion. He had, he had no heart. It was, it was legalism one-on-one. -on -one. You could just say it like that. In the Gospel of Matthew, I'm going to set this up and tell you how bad Jesus thought of these guys. In the Gospel of Matthew, you find out that Jesus calls these guys hypocrites. He calls them snakes. He calls them vipers. He, he calls them very judgmental. He said one time, he says this. He says, you guys will tithe from your salt and pepper shakers. <laughs> you know? Let me get a tenth of my uh, salt here and take this to the church, you know. And let me take a tenth of my pepper and take it to the church, you know. They were doing, doing all these, I mean, they did stuff down to the tea. Anything that they had, they would tithe off of it. But when it come to justice and mercy and faith, oh, they neglect that kind of stuff. They wanted to look right and have all the T's crossed and the I's Dotted, right? He even says this. Jesus says to him this in, in, in the book of Matthew 2. He says, you guys are like whitewashed tombs on the outside. But inside, you're like, you're the dead man's bones. 
I mean, you can have the prettiest casket in the world, but inside, you know what's inside of a casket. It's dead man's bones. Uh, they give an, he gives another example over in Luke 18. Some of you may remember this. There was a Pharisee and a tax collector walked into church one day. Pharisee sits up front, far away from the tax collector. Pharisee's sitting up there, and he starts praying. And he prays out loud, and he says, God, I thank you I'm not like other men. <laughs> I don't do the things that they do. And he said it out loud, even like this tax collector back here. I'm glad I'm not like him. I mean, how arrogant can you be? This was Nicodemus's right here. Make sense? So, notice that he come to Jesus by night. Now, when you think about it, he was probably doing it because he was embarrassed. Because... Nicodemus had to look a certain way like he had it all together. But here he is coming to Jesus at night because this thing, what he's seen, is eating him alive. You got to realize, he's been around, he heard John the Baptist preaching. He saw the dude coming out of the wilderness eating, you know, wild locusts and drinking honey, Right? He, he, he's seen that. He's seen him come out of the woods. He's seen him proclaiming the Messiah is here. You got to know. They know that. They know the word. They're looking for the Messiah. They're look, really looking for the Messiah hard. So he's curious. And they say, well, this Jesus is the Messiah. John the Baptist says, this is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Right there, right there. That's him. That's him. That's him. So you know, Nicodemus is like, man. And then he sees them, sees Jesus start healing all these people at Passover. So he's like, what in the world is going on with this guy? I got to go see. But you know they've already been chattering, already been talking like, who is this guy? They're not believing. But Nicodemus, Nicodemus just, he could not let it go. He had to go find out who Jesus was. Don't you know he couldn't sleep? I mean, he's like, you know, and, he, and it, it's possible that Nicodemus has already prayed for some of these people. He may have already laid his hands on a demon-possessed person. He may have already tried to uh, heal blind eye, and none of this is happening on his watch. I'm just saying that's a possibility. But to see these people now walking around and nothing's wrong with them, don't you know he's got to be just, man, what is going on? So I've got to go. I've got to go. I've got to go find out about this Jesus. Have you ever said that? Curiosity ever get the best of you? You just had to go find out about this Jesus? So it says in verse 2 that he came to Jesus by night, and he said to him, Rabbi, hey, we know you're a teacher. We've been seeing you teaching, and you, we know you got to be from God because nobody can do the things that you're doing unless God is with you. But watch how Jesus answered this man. You got to know, this guy in the, in the people's eyes, he's high on the hog, right? This Nicodemus. Jesus cuts to the chase, verse 3. He said, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So, so this kingdom of God, Nicodemus, that you're after, the promises of the word, you know, the, 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 the principles of the word that you've studied all your life, this Messiah that brings salvation, all this Nicodemus, if you, if you really, really, really want that and you seem to want that because you've devoted your whole life to it, he says there's one thing needs to happen in your life and it ain't happened yet. You must be born again. Whew. Don't you know that was heavy? But Nicodemus come to him. He won't, he wants to, he's wanting to, to, to discuss signs and wonders and miracles. But Jesus stops him in his tracks and he says, let's get to the real issue, Nicodemus. Let's talk about your heart. You need to be born again. Mm, cut to the chase, Jesus. Right? Cut to the chase. That's just the way he rolls. So Jesus brings up this phrase that we know of as born again. And then it, that just throws Nicodemus for a loop because he's thinking physical. Watch what he says. Verse 4. How in the world can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter into the womb a second time and be born? No, that's just weird, Nicodemus. 
Jesus says, most surely I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and which born is the, of the Spirit, see the capital S, is Spirit. He says, listen, Nicodemus, don't marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. Now, let me, let me just, let's just, let's just unpack this just for a minute. What does it mean to be born of water? I kind of poured over this and poured over this. I, I kind of, you know, in the past, yes, you know, when we're born a first time, we do pass through the fluid of mama, born of water. But here's the thing. If you've been born, you've been born. Okay, everybody knows that you're, you're born. I, I don't think Jesus is truly meaning born of water, meaning coming through mama here. Okay, if you're born, you're, bo you're born. <laughs> okay, so I don't think, he, you know, he's saying you, get, you must be born of water. And then he says, born of the Spirit. We got, we got two births going on. Honestly, all, all of us that, that, that are here and listening, that would ever read the Word of God, had to be born. I, I, there are some people out there, I think, that were hatched. I'm just not sure. <laughs> Who is Jesus talking to here? I'm, I'm going to show you what I'm getting after here. Jesus is talking to a very uh, knowledgeable man that knows the Old Testament scripture, okay? And he is trying to lead this man that has been legalistic, rules and regulations. He's trying to lead him to true saving faith, okay? So what could Jesus take him back to that would make him think of what he's really talking about and what's going on here? How do you truly get saved? So he takes him, I truly believe, by using this, using this statement, born of water and born of the Spirit, he is referring to Ezekiel 36. Let's go there right quick. Hold John 3. Let's go to Ezekiel 36. You've got to see this. Now remember, Jesus is a personal God, okay? When he speaks to you, he's going to speak to you in things that you know. He, he, he's wanting to get your individual attention, my individual attention. So he's trying to get uh, Nicodemus's individual, undivided attention right here. So he said, just said to him, he says, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Okay, in, in Nicodemus's mind, he's thinking, okay, because he knows the Old Testament, as long as I keep all of these rules and regulations that Moses gave, and all these try to keep all these man-made ones that I've made, pretty much, he, he, had a, he, he def probably made a, a ton of them, okay, that, hey, I have made my way to God. I'm better than all y'all. That's why they could stand up there and say, I ain't like this tax collector, this thief. They hated tax collectors in the day. I'm not like this guy. I'm holy. Look at me. Look at my list of what I've done. I've done good. I'm on God's side. And Jesus is sitting there going, no, 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 son. This is not what it's about. So I, I, I truly believe when he says born of water and born of the Spirit, Nicodemus had to know, had to know what, he's, what Ezekiel said right here. Let me give it to you. Ezekiel 36, prophecy, beautiful right here. Ezekiel 36, verse, uh, what did I write down? 24. Are you ready for it? Okay. Here's a, here it is. For I will, tell me this doesn't sound like salvation that we know from Jesus now that we know we're on the other side of the cross. For I will take you from among the nations, gather you out of all countries and bring you into your own land. Come on, somebody. I ain't who I used to be. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you. Sound like living water, doesn't it? And you shall be clean. Now, don't, don't think, don't go get crazy here with Catholicism with me where they sprinkle you in baptism. That ain't what I'm talking about. We're talking about Jesus, God washing us clean, 
with water, the living water, him, right? I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. Remember, they were going after all that mess. Watch this. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh, a tender heart. Watch this. I will put my capital S spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, my principles. And you will keep my judgments and you will do them. Come on with it. Think about it right there. Listen to what all that says. Has any of this happened to you since you've known Jesus? Has, has, has your heart softened because you're not who you used to be? You're not standing firm on things that have been passed down from generation to generation. Now that we see it, that is wrong, the way we treat certain people, the way we judge certain things. No, God's, we don't get mad like we used to because God has softened our heart. He has, listen, he's taken our spirit. Notice, he's washed us clean. What does that mean? He's forgiven us from all of our mess. Okay? Forgiven, washed us up, just like, just like uh, 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 I hooked, I thought I had a fish, but I had hooked somebody else's pole that lost their pole in the water. <laughs> I get it up, and I don't even wonder what a guy was like. Man, I got a limb or a stick or whatever, and it was this green thing coming out of the water. I was like, man. And then I looked, and I saw it was a rod. It was a, somebody's rod that had flew out of their boat. But it had grown green all over it. And I scratched some of that green off, and I looked in there, and it, it, was, it was a, a KVD. You know, that's, if, if, if you know fish, you know what I'm talking about. I was like, man, it's a good rod. Man, I got that thing home, got me a little brush, got me some soap and water, cleaned that thing up. Guess what? I've been catching fish on that rod. I've been using that rod. I cleaned that rod up. I've been using that rod. What did I do? I cleaned it up. God wants to use you to fish for him. He's going to clean you up. Okay? So that's what, he, that's what he's talking about here. He, he washes us. Okay? He changes our heart. In other words, changes our point of view and the way we see things. We used to didn't see it. He finally opened our eyes where we can actually see this world for what it is and, 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 and see situations and see people's motives and see when people's hurting and not. You know, he, we can see different things. But how can we do that? We see it right there in, in, in verse uh, 27. He said, I put my spirit in you. There's the difference maker right there. Now we have a guide. Now we have a comforter. Now we have strength. Now we have all this. This is what he's trying to tell Nicodemus. Hey, you need to be cleaned up from all your nasty point of views, all, all, all your religified stuff, right? You, the way you think that you're holy. That's, that's the problem. He thinks. He is right with God because of what he has done, and it has nothing to do with what God has done. That's religion, okay? He thinks, he thinks I got it all together. Everybody else is terrible. Only the Pharisees. Only the, we're the only one that's got it together. That's stinking thinking. That's bad thinking. So he's saying, hey, I want to take that heart out of you. I want to put a tender heart in you. And now, listen, I'm going to put my spirit on you. I want you to be born again. I'm going to put my spirit, my spirit, my spirit in you. Jesus in you. That's what he's trying to tell him here when he says, Nicodemus, you must be born again. So when you say born of water, here's what I, here's what I truly believe the word is teaching. I believe what Jesus is teaching. When he says born of water, in other words, you cleaned up. Let me clean you up. Let me clean you up. So Jesus goes on to explain this even more. He's, he, let's watch it, verse 6. He says, that which is born of flesh is flesh. But that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Think about it. We, we're, again, we're, we're, we're three in one. We are a spirit that lives in a body that possesses a soul, a mind, will, and emotion. Okay? If, if, you're, if our spirit is not connected back with the one who created us, what good are we? 
only, only, only can the Spirit of God bring a spiritual rebirth. Okay? That means true salvation is the Spirit's work in our life. It has nothing to do with what we can accomplish. The, the, on, the, only, the only human effort in salvation would be this. Faith, believing it, right? And surrendering. As far as the work that it took to save you, we had nothing to do with it. Our part is, man, I believe it. I believe it, and I'm going to surrender to that. Because, see, here, here's the thing. A lot of people say, I believe it, but they don't walk it. That's why I say there's belief in surrender. There can't just be belief. At some point, you've got to surrender to this thing. I know a lot of people that believe. The devils believe and say they tremble. I'm talking about somebody that surrenders their life to Jesus Christ. Now, when somebody surrenders to Jesus, this is how graves get turned into gardens. Yeah. Think about it. Think about it. This is how the grave gets turned into the garden. Yeah. So when we talk about being born again, we're, 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 we're actually talking about being born from above. Yeah. We're the Lord's. So the message to Nicodemus here and those that are like him is real simple. Your fleshly ways and your keeping of the rules is not going to allow you to see the kingdom of God. That's it. Your fleshly ways, any efforts to get to God is not going to save you. Your own righteousness will not do it. Your own knowledge will not do it. It is the work of the Holy Spirit. It's giving your heart to Him and saying, Lord, take over. You, fight, you got at some point pass it on. Take the wheel, Jesus. I tell you, Carrie Underwood was preaching. Take this wheel. I cannot do it anymore. But then once he takes it, you can't snatch it back away from him. When he says, no, no, go, go. It's, 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 it's like that. It's like that. Watch Jesus' illustration, though, of all this. Verse 8, he says, I'm back, I'm back in, uh, yeah, John, I told you that back in John. The wind blows where it wishes. True or false? And you hear the sound of it, but you cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. I mean, the weatherman say the wind's going to be out of north today. I mean, you, you can figure that much out, but you don't know how hard it's going to blow. You don't know when it's going to stop. You don't know when it's going to swirl. I've been out there in the deer stand before. Deer can smell you a mile away. And I've been set up, north wind, hit me right here in the face, Blowing my scent that away. I know not to even look that away. The deer's not going to come that way unless he's got a cold. You know, because he's going to smell me. I mean, they, they, they smell. A, a, a grown deer is going to smell you. So I'm, I'm hunting this way because I know deer coming this way. Deer start coming this way. I get ready. I get excited. And you know how to do down in them hollows sometimes. That wind, a swirl. Oh, smell that funk of Scotty, Mr. Deer. And they raise their little white tail and they're gone. Why? Because that wind swirled and he smelt my stinky tail, I guess. I don't know, even though I bathe in dopey. I don't understand it. <laughs> anyway, so the spirit, think about it, is like the wind. All right, Spirit of God, like the wind. You cannot see the Spirit of God. I believe the Spirit of God is all up in here today. Amen. We know He's in here because He lives in us if you're a believer, okay? But His presence is with us. I truly believe that He wanted to have church tonight up in here, right? And, and if we would come in and prepare our hearts right, we, we're going to have church. I believe we are having some church. So we can't see, but here's the thing. I can see the effects of Him. If you'd have knew me, you know, 20 years ago, you could see the effects of the Holy Spirit right now. Because I wouldn't be up here talking about this. We can hear the effects of it. Anybody know of a, a, a great big old mean daddy or grandpa that used to be rough and tough, but now you just hear the most kind, loving things coming out of his mouth? Mmm, that's that wind. 
That's that spiritual wind that blowed through his life and absolutely changed him. Yeah, we, we can hear it. We can see the effects of the Holy Spirit, and we can hear the effects of the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, there's some people sitting in here right now would have never prayed, would have never prayed, would have never prayed, and they're praying out loud. There are people sitting in here, maybe even back there by the computer, praying, pe- praying for people at her job. Praying for people at her job. What? And she doesn't even like people. <laughs> I ain't saying any names, did I, Rob? <laughs> I'm sorry, Jamie. It's the truth, though. I can see the evidence of God all over her life and, and, and all of our lives. I can hear God. I can see God when I see you. Yes. Why? Because your life has been transformed. Yes. I can see it. You can see it. Especially when you know somebody. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Verse 9. Nicodemus answered and said to him, what you talking about, Jesus? That's what I picture. How can these things be? <laughs> you got to think. This man has been studying this word. All, he's, he's, he's older. He thinks he has got it all together. And he says, how can you flip the script on this? How, how is this like it's going to be? Jesus says, are you a teacher of Israel and do not know these things? I mean, he, 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 listen, Nicodemus was a great teacher, but he's a slow learner. He's a poor learner. And listen, you will be a slow learner when you're legalistic and you have a religified heart. That means you're numb to spiritual things. We can miss the revelation of God when we're, when we're legalistic and religified. I know that's not a word. I just like using that word. But listen to me, church. Listen to me. Don't ever miss this. There is a huge difference between religion and relationship. Huge. Okay, here's the difference. This is the best way to explain it. Religion is how man gets to God. How funny is that even saying that? How, How can a man get to God? A man can't get to God. What you talking about? Relationship is this. How man came to God. I mean, how God came to man, not man came to God. How God came to man. Which one are you going to rest in? That you can keep a list of rules and make it all the way to God. Uh, To me, you would be freaking out every day. Did I really just think that? Oh, i got to start over. First time somebody pulls out in front of you, riding slow in the left lane, you have just lost your religion. You ever heard people say, I lost my religion? Yeah, you lost your religion. You lost your chance to get to God. Listen, you can't get to God. It's like, uh, what do we play with the kids? Candyland. You're doing good. Nah, 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 nah. And then you land on whatever one of them ice cream cones or something. All the way back to the beginning. You know, all, man, I made all this there. All the way. That's all it is. One sin, one wrong thought, one worry, one fear, one crossword. Boom. Back to zero. Do you really think, do you really think that's God's design for salvation? Absolutely not. That's why Jesus Christ steps out of heaven, wraps himself in flesh, lives this life. He shows us how to live, showed us how to, he he, he can sympathize with everything that we go through. He died for us, beaten, died on the cross for us to pay our sin debt. That's the gospel. Three days later, he gets up out of the grave. This is our Jesus. He did that. He came to us. So then he looks at us and he says, hey, do you believe that? Yes, Jesus. Thank you with everything in me. Thank you for paying my sin debt. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for washing me clean. Thank you for your living water. Thank you for doing heart surgery on me, taking this hard heart out, angry heart, selfish heart out, putting a new heart in me and giving me your spirit. Lord, thank you for coming to me. Do you, so, so Jesus is looking at me and he says, do you believe that? Yes, with everything in me. And I'm going to go tell it too. He says, that's good. He said, so are you going to surrender to that? Are you going to surrender to that? Are you going to come up under that authority? Do you believe that? Because if so, yes, that's salvation. 
That's being born again. That's a transformation. I'll, we'll look at that more in just a minute. But that's relationship, church. Don't ever say, don't ever think that you can keep enough rules to get to God. It's all about having a relationship with the one who paid the price for your sin. It's all about him. It's all about Jesus. It's always been about Jesus. So, we don't read anything here about this night that Nicodemus ever changed his mind. Don't see it. But here's what I want to show you. I do know he never forgot this time with Jesus because I want to show you a couple of scriptures here and, and you can make up your own mind. So, we're going to fast forward. Let's go to John 7 and then we'll go to John 19. Because don't you know when he left there that night, his thinker got to, got to thinking. Yeah. Them seeds started popping and like popcorn in there. So look at John 7. I'm going to read verse 50 and 51. Now, you, you got to realize the Pharisees hated Jesus they're the ones always trying to capture him, always trying to judge him, always trying to put him in jail because they did not believe that he was the Messiah the Scriptures taught. I, I don't know how they missed it. and I, He fulfilled it to a T, but they didn't believe it. Okay, So they would always have these little meetings, these little meetings, these little meetings about what are we going to do with Jesus, right? So watch this in verse 50. This is one of those meetings. It says, Nicodemus, do you have this in parentheses? It says, he who came to Jesus by night, being one of them. Okay. Said to them, does our law judge a man before it hears him and knows what he's doing? Okay. So he spoke up during one of those meetings he says, guys, hold up, hold up, hold up. Do we really know what he's doing? Hey, at least he went to get the, gets the grain, right? I'm just giving, I'm just giving you some, some things about Nicodemus here. Let me give you another one, John, John 19. Let me show you this. You think about what it takes to stand up in front of the, what, they would, what, we call the, what they call the Sanhedrin. Because they were all against Jesus. Okay, John 19, watch verse 38. And this is after Jesus had passed. It says, After this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, secretly... How sad. For fear of the Jews, <laughs> asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and took the body of Jesus. Watch verse 39. And Nicodemus, who at first came to, by, to Jesus by night, also came bringing, look at, the, look at this, a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 100 pounds. They're going to they're put it on the body for the burial. Then they took the body of Jesus, bound it in strips of linen with spices as the custom of the Jews is to bury. Now, you tell me, why in the world would Nicodemus be doing all this stuff if his heart hadn't changed? Hmm? So, Jesus coming to this religious leader of leaders and telling him, when Nicodemus came to him, let's cut to the chase. He says, listen, brother, you must be born again if you want to enter the kingdom of heaven. That set on him. These Old Testament scriptures, just like the one I read, there's others, Ezekiel 36, set on Nicodemus. And I truly believe with everything in me, he would not have been there prepping the body for burial if he didn't believe. And if he was on the fence, I think three days later, he wasn't on the fence anymore. Huh? 
man. I think something has changed in his life. I really do believe. So, this points to us in this Bible study. And I know this is Wednesday night, and this is what we would call the core, but I still got to ask you. Because Jesus asked the most religified man in the country and told him he must be born again. So I, I, I offer that uh, after telling you a little of my testimony about how I believe I was born again with everything in me, that Jesus washed me clean from my anger, my pride, my lust, my lifestyle, my worldly lifestyle. He gave me a new heart. He took away that heart of stone. He put a tender heart in me now. I cried to drop of a hat now. Me and Cody watch them little old movies. Be crying, man. I'm tender. I, I used to do that. What happened? What happened, Buck? What happened to us, man? Something's changed. I mean, earlier on in this church ministry, being here at this church, I was having people drive up from Arkansas just come and visit him because they didn't believe it. True. What happened to you? <laughs> you know, listen, I, I say that, and I'm not bragging at all. I, yeah, I'm bragging. I'm bragging about Jesus because it's not me. Y'all, you, no, this is not. -uh. I'm truly a different person. And, 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 I, and it's because of Jesus and it's because of his spirit that dwells in me. Oh, now don't get me wrong. My flesh, my flesh is battling that and will try to rise up every once in a while just like yours does. But if we could continue to surrender, we'll be just fine. We'll be just fine. So, are you born from above? I know you've been born from your mama or you wouldn't be in here. Okay? Are you born from above? When I say born from above, are you a child of God? Has Jesus Christ, have you surrendered to him? Has he given you a new heart? Has he put his spirit in you? Because the evidence that you've been born again is, is the, his spirit dwelling in you. Do you have an invoice in you now? You, you, sh you, should, not, <laughs> you should not doubt. Listen to me. You should not be in here tonight or watching this later or listening to this later, whoever's watching right now. And ever doubt your salvation. If you've got a question in your mind that you don't know if you're saved or not, let me just make it real simple for you. You know if somebody lives in your house, right? <laughs> hey, they're right there, okay? You hear them, you see them. You know they're there. You talk to when somebody's living in your house, you know, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Is Jesus living in your house now? Is he in you? Do you know without a shadow of doubt? His spirit is evidence that you belong to him. It's obvious that you are led every day. That you know what's right and wrong every day. It's obvious when you pick up on certain things, when people's hurting and things like that, you're led to do certain things. You know that's the Spirit of God. It, it, it's, it's not the devil unless it's bad stuff. The devil can talk to you too. Yeah, he can come in and out of your house too. But listen, you know, you know when there's been a change of somebody living in your house or not. Is Jesus living in your house? Let me just give you some scripture. I want, I want to give you some scripture, and you've heard some of these, and some of you may not have. But I want you to, to look at your life tonight through the eyes of scripture, through the eyes of Jesus. Because, man, I want you to know. I, listen, I know what it means to struggle with your salvation or not. I walked down an aisle at 14 years old. It was a church set up about like this. I come down that aisle, and that preacher, here's what that preacher would say. He scared me to death. 
He said, there's somebody in there today. If you don't give your life to Jesus, you're going to walk out these doors. I, ain't, I would never do this. You're going to walk out these doors, and you're going to get run over on the highway out there, and it's going to be over. Like, man, that's me. I like playing the role. <laughs> 14, came down, went over there, you know, over there on the side, and, and I remember the music minister. He's up there leading and stuff. He come over, and he, he prayed for me. I said, I want to give my life to Jesus. You know, but Listen. There, I tell you what, I was about a year and a half after that, two years after that, when I went buck wild. I do not believe anything in me, I meant what I was saying that day. But it was funny, every time I'd go sprinkle in a church here and there outside of there, you know, I'd be sitting there and I'd be, be battling. Lord, was that real or not? Or, you know, and I hated that battle, that, that not knowing if I knew Jesus or not. That is the worst battle. I mean, it's the greatest decision that you'll ever make in your entire life. And like, I didn't know. Well, I didn't know because I didn't know Jesus wasn't inside of me. I didn't mean what I said. I never surrendered to him. I mean, I, I had faith. I ain't gonna lie, I had faith. I believed that God, God is there. I believed in Jesus, believed all that stuff. But I didn't surrender. <laughs> I did not surrender to Jesus that day. But at 27 years old, driving down the road, bumping my music, going on about my business, prideful as ever, in my spirit, Jesus said to me, I know it was, it wasn't an audible voice, but it was just, it's just one of them things that you know. When are you going to serve me? When are you going to serve me? I love you. When are you going to serve me? I love you. My gosh, y'all. I had to pull over. I had to pull over. I had to do some business with the Lord right then and right there. And I knew, I knew, I knew I was lost. I didn't, I didn't have it. He, he was not my Lord and Savior. He was just knowledge I had. He was just knowledge I had. That's all Jesus was, was just knowledge I had, which was doing me no good. Oh, I could use the name and write crowds of people. Oh, amen. Yeah. No, it was just knowledge I had. It was not my heart. But when I finally gave it all over to him, and I'll never forget that lady. She, she stood up uh, when I was getting baptized at, at, at a church over in Longview. She stood up. She says, I got a word for him. I got a word for him. Right out of, right out, right out of Scripture says, says, you did not choose me, but I chose you. And your fruit will remain. I didn't choose. I didn't choose. In other words, he said, man, I chose you to go, go do my work. So, so he, he spoke over me. And man, let me tell you something. Mm, there's no way I'd ever be standing up here. <laughs> it's the obvious work of the Holy Spirit. I'm just telling you about my life. There's no way I'd be standing up here in front of y'all talking about anything. I could maybe stand up here and talk about some fishing or some chicken. But that's about all. I could not talk to you about Jesus. But now I can talk to you about Jesus because I believe everything in me that this is God's word. I believe he saved me and I believe he can save you and I believe he has saved you. But you know what I'm saying? That's what I believe and I believe it with everything in me. So, can your friends and your families testify about your change? Can they? Can they say, yeah, She's not who she used to be. He's not who he used to be. Whether they like it or not. Because I'm telling you, I got family in my right life right now. I think I'm a cult leader. <laughs> I ain't even lying. <laughs> I'm a cult leader. What? Okay, whatever you want to call it. Jesus, my God, the same God that made you. I'm all in. So let me, I'm just going to give you some verses here. Let me give you some verses, and we'll be done. I didn't mean to get off on a rabbit trail. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. We've all heard this. I want you to look at your life and tell me if this is you. It says, if you're in Christ, if anyone is in Jesus, born again saved, you've, you've asked Jesus to become your Lord and Savior, you've surrendered, you have faith in Him. If you are in Christ, you are a new, come on somebody, new creation. <laughs> Okay, what have we been talking about? Born again. Nicodemus, you got to be born again. If you're in Jesus, you are born again. 
Okay? You're new. You're new, you're new, you're new, you're new. What do you mean new? You ain't who you used to be. How, how do you know that? Because it says old things have passed. And what? All things have become new. Just take that verse right there. Is, does this speak of you? Does this really, truly, hey, hey, it's summertime. We in July. I don't even know what the day is. Listen, it's time to make a decision. Have you truly become new? And I'm not one of these people trying to get you saved every week. I just want you to be saved. I want you to know the Lord for real. I, it would break my heart that for you to be up in, under this preaching in here and not know how to know the Lord. Uh-uh. I want you to know every day I get up here, I want you to know the gospel. Okay, let me give you another one. Titus 3.5. Speaking of salvation, speaking of being born again, he says this. Not by righteousness, our righteousness, our list of keeping rules, okay? Our, our, our keeping rules, but by, come on with it, his mercy, he has saved us. Do you see that? Let, let's just stop, let me just stop right there. His mercy we're, we're not getting what we deserve. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. His mercy says, I'm not going to kill you. I'm not going to end you. I'm going to pay the price for your sin. Do you trust me as your Lord and Savior now? Mercy. Mercy. Okay, watch this. Not by our righteousness or keeping rules, but by His mercy. Mercy, he has saved us. Watch this. Through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. There's that word washing again. I, I don't know about you, but I wash with water. Okay? Washing. What, notice that word regeneration. What does that word regeneration mean? It means a cleansing. It means new birth. New birth. Go, go look it up in the Greek. New birth. You think about those that you drive a diesel, a big rig. You, you, sometimes you got to do a regen on it, short for re regeneration. In other words, that, that fuel filter gets so much soot in there that it's in danger of catching fire and burning your whole truck down. You've got to stop and do a regen on it. You've got to do a clean out of that soot so you can get back to doing what you were doing. It's, like, it's beautiful. You've never thought of a big rig as your life. Listen, we gang up all of this soot and filthiness of our sin and our life and our old ways, and it needs to be regened. It needs to be washed out. It needs to be clean. And the only thing that can do that is living water and the blood of Jesus and the renewing of the Holy Spirit. You know, originally, it says we walk with God. Adam and Eve walked with God. That's the way he, that's the way he intended it. But we, we made a bad choice. We made a bad choice. But he's bringing it back when you give your life to him. Remember, the veil is torn. So, here's the result of being born again. It's funny. Cody and I have been carrying our twins to... They call it camp. It's the type of VBS in Shreveport this week. And the title of the camp is workmanship, his workmanship. It was real cool because the day I go in, I hear the, the preacher teaching on Nicodemus. <laughs> and it was just so cool. And he used the same verse that I had written down, Ephesians 2.10. Some of you know this verse very well. Here's the result. Listen to me. Stay with me. Here's the result of being born again. For we are his workmanship now. You're not your own workmanship. That word workmanship could mean masterpiece. We are our own, we are, we are, we are not our own masterpiece. We are his masterpiece. Did you notice the wording there? We are his workmanship, his masterpiece, created in Christ Jesus. Wait a minute. 
Created, born again by who? Christ Jesus. Created in Christ Jesus for what? Good things, good works, which he knew that was going to happen even beforehand. He, he knows the end from the beginning. So here's what you got to realize. We are his, his workmanship now. I, I don't know what you thought your life it was when you start g- got going at a young age. You know, I'm going to make something out of myself. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. That's us uh, making our own so-called masterpiece. We were our own workmanship. We were, we, were, we were doing our own thing, right? Well, this word workmanship here, masterpiece, in the Greek means poem. So you see your life as a poem. What, if you were writing the poem of your life, what would it sound like? What would it read like? Okay. Now that you've switched owners and you're born again and were his workmanship, his masterpiece, my God, how does that poem sound now? How does it flow now? But here's the thing. It's not even done. Some of us has not even gotten started yet, really. So when you think of workmanship, without Jesus, we're literally just a blank canvas. Okay? We're just a blank canvas or we're a blank sheet of paper. How about this? We're an empty garage. Just an empty garage. or, Or you're just a piece of wood. Now, I say all this, this, because, see, a a canvas can be a beautiful painting. A garage can be where somebody's working on something in there, and they're creating something, or they're fixing something in a garage. A piece of paper can be the possibility of a poem, or a piece of wood could be whittled into something amazing, even a big, nice house. When you become born again, you turn your canvas your wood, your garage, your piece of paper over to Jesus and say, do your thing. Y'all hear me? You're saying, Lord, here, here's my canvas. Do with it what you want to do. In other words, you've stepped over into true purpose. You're, you're, not, you're not who you're trying to make yourself be. You are who what God's designed, what God originally created you for. That's the canvas that he's going to put. If you painted your own picture and then he painted your picture, can you imagine the difference? Because imagine what he shows us what we look like is not even fair. We're like, no, Lord, that can't be me. There's no way that's me. He said, yeah, that's you in me. But if we paint it, we'll have all this other mess. And it would be a mess. So this is what being born again means. When you're not born again, you're just a blank canvas trying to do it your own. But being born again, we're his workmanship, his masterpiece. Isn't that good? So here's the result. I'm done. I know I've been rambling. 1 Peter 1, 3. Listen to this. I love this. Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who by his, his abundant mercy, not yours and not mine, has begotten, has begotten, begotten us again, notice this, to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. What does this mean now? Since we've been born again, we have this hope in us that's not dead. He's alive. Can you you imagine... Nicodemus says, I finally put my faith in Jesus. I finally put my faith in Jesus. I'm going to do my part, man. I'm so sorry, Jesus. I didn't, I'm going I'm I'm to prepare your body. I, I, man, and j- just when I was getting started, I just started. Can you imagine three days later when he got up out of the grave? I got a living hope now. <laughs> Can you imagine all the disciples that were crying and they were upset? Man, Jesus, Peter, and then went back to fishing. I mean, they don't even know what to do. Is he who he says he is or was he just a wonderful man? What is going to happen? I thought he was going to set up his kingdom right here. What is, you know what? I don't even know anymore. I don't even know him anymore. <gasps> Empty tomb? What? What? 
Can you imagine when Thomas says, I ain't going to believe it's Jesus until I see the scars. Can you imagine in his brain when he saw the scars in the side of Jesus, he saw the nail prints in his hands, He's like, oh my goodness, this is Jesus. This is the one. This is him. Can you imagine their hope just like fireworks? Hey, same for us. We just didn't have to go through Jesus is dead. And the questions. No, we never had to question anything. It is finished. <laughs> it's done. He's done it. He did it. He's doing it every day. It's a done deal. All we have to do is have faith in him, surrender our life to him, Amen. do what he's called us to do, walk in his purpose, his principles. Listen, man, the principles that he puts into the, in the word is not to, so you will have a, 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 a no, no, no life. No, it's what's best for us. It's to keep us out of trouble, from keep us from getting in a bind and maybe carrying ourselves where p other people may want to know, why are you different? Why are you different now? I'll tell you why I'm different because of Jesus. And people are drawn to you like a bug to a bug light. That's what he wants you to do. Be his hands and feet. Be his hands and feet. So, I might stop right there. I done got all fired up and off on everything else under the sun. But I'm going to stop right there. But what I want to do, I want to do is challenge you. I want to challenge you to really uh, look over your life. I want you to really examine your life. The, the scripture teaches us to examine our life. And I want you to know before you walk out of here today. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this. Is Daryl Dar back there? Daryl, are you listening back there? I'm going to ask Daryl to come back in if he's still here. Because I want, I want to do something to do something today. I want to do something today a little different. I, 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 wanna, I want Daryl to come. I want, I want him to start playing. Daryl, I want you to, I want you to, can you sing that again, brother? Or something, something like that. Because here's what I want you to do. I want you to begin to examine yourself. Listen, I ain't trying to mess your evening up. I'm not trying to do anything of that. I'm just trying to be obedient to the Lord. I want you to take this time. If you're struggling with something, if you're going through something, maybe now's the time. If, 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 if you've never truly accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I, right where you're sitting, I want you to start doing business with God. I want you to talk to Him. While Daryl's singing, he's going to be singing about an anchor or something. I mean, he's going to be singing about Jesus, whatever it is. And I want you to connect to this. And I want you to just take this few moments and talk to Him. Talk to him. If, 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 listen, if you want something to pray about, Kelly's going to have surgery tomorrow. Pray about her. She, she's going to go under and she's going to get uh, have, have, have that stuff removed out of her lungs. Shane's going to have surgery next week. I know there are people in your life, in your life right now, things are going through. If, you, if, if this is not you today and you don't need to be pray, praying about salvation, pray about these other things. Pray about your church. Pray for those around you. Listen, take this time. Take this time to just spend a little bit more time with the Lord. But if you're in it today and you need to make a decision, man, make that decision. Make that decision with all your heart. Don't turn back. But here's something that I would, I would want you to do at some point. I want you to come tell me at some point. It doesn't even have to be today because I know how this goes and I ain't trying to embarrass anybody. I want you to come tell me whether, you, whether you've recommitted to the Lord or where you come into the Lord for the first time I want you to come share that with me because and for only one reason because I want to rejoice with you I want to rejoice with you so just listen to that Holy Spirit that's in in and around you right now and do what he's asking you to do I love you guys I thank you for being here tonight amen